Good morning. I am Dr. Atanu Roy, senior resident from the Department of Physiology, AIMS. Now, this module will discuss about the sensations called as the taste and smell. The major objective of this module are divided into two parts, namely the smell and taste. First, we will discuss the smell and later the taste. Now, let's talk about the smell. Now, the main objectives of this module are understanding the basic structure of nose, olfactory epithelium and olfactory bulb. Second is the generation of sensation of smell and transmission pathways. Then we will be discussing about the abnormalities of the smell and finally the summary. Now let's imagine you are passing by an open drainage. What do you do? You run slow or run fast. You run fast obviously because the smell is unbearable. Contrary, near a flower shop you are enjoying the smell and feel nostalgic about the first rose you gave it to someone you loved. So what's interesting is to understand is that how a simple smell made an aversive response or brought you closer or took you down to the memory lane. To answer all these questions in this chapter, we will learn how the smell works. Now, let's understand the structure of the nose. The nasal cavity is divided into two segments, the respiratory segment and the olfactory segment. The olfactory segment is lined with a specialized type of pseudostratified columnar epithelium which is also known as the olfactory epithelium or they form the olfactory mucous membrane. Now it contains the receptors for the sense of smell. This segment is located along the dorsal roof of the nasal cavity. Now, we can always imagine nose to be compared with a funnel. Now what does the funnel do? It collects the things and concentrate at one point. In the same way nose also collects the air containing the odoriferous particles and concentrate it on the internal structure. Now let's understand the anatomy of the nose a little better. The nasal cavity is divided into right and left half by a cartilaginous septum. Now each half is divided into concave on either side and at the roof of the nasal cavity and near the septum there is an area of olfactory epithelium which consists the olfactory sensory neurons. The rest of the nasal mucosa is respiratory function which responds to strong irritants by sneezing or lacrimation which is mainly due to the presence of trigeminal nerve ending. Now the olfactory epithelium consists of basal cells and supporting cells. Supporting cells are also called as sustenticular cells. Now basal cells replenish supporting cells which further differentiates into sensory cells. Olfactory sensory cells are the only neurons of the body that are replenished by cell division. The exterior openings of the neurons are having a villi like projection to increase the surface area for absorption of odoriferous substances. Now the main supporting cells and the Bowman's glands produce mucus into which the odoriferous substances dissolve and binds with the odoriferous binding protein which further helps in the processing of the smell sensation. Now let's talk about the highway to the smell or this is the neuronal pathway and signal transduction. Just like taste. A nice smell won't be perceived if it is not getting decoded in the brain. Now for the information to pass there is always a proper pathway till the brain. 
the odoriferous substances are usually volatile and the vapor contains the molecules which in turn is inhaled by the nose now the villous structure of the olfactory neuron traps the molecules and odoriferous binding proteins transfers them to the receptors which are the g protein coupled receptors now after they bind there is a cascade of responses causing the opening of ionic channels which in turn leads to the generation of receptor potential if the stimulus is sufficient for receptor potential to exceed its threshold an action potential in the olfactory nerve or the first cranial nerve is triggered the axons of the olfactory sensory cells travel through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to join the olfactory bulb which is described in figure number 4 now inside the bulb the neuron synapses with the mitral and tufted cells now this synapses forms clusters known as the glomeruli the nearby glomeruli are interconnected by periglomerular cells which are inhibitory cells that is they release the gaba now the mitral cells are also interconnected by granule cells now the information exchanged between mitral and granule cells or the periglomerular cells are bidirectional the lateral inhibition exerted by the granule and periglomerular cells has significant olfactory efferent outcome the axons of the tufted and mitral cells project to the prepyriform cortex the amygdala and ethorhinal cortex which in turn projects to the hippocampus now the pathway to amygdala is involved with emotional responses now the pathway to the ethorhinal cortex is concerned with olfactory memories now that's why we remember a good and pleasant smell now am i smelling something the concept of adaptation and odor detection threshold is going to be taught now now let's see what happens what happens when one of your friends bring some rotten eggs inside your room we smell it even from the farthest corner of the room how does it happen it's mainly answered by the concept of odor detection threshold now the odor detection thresholds are defined as the minimum concentration of a chemical that can be detected now hydrogen sulfide has the lowest odor detection threshold whereas carbon monoxide has the highest also remember that the toxic dose of carbon monoxide is much lesser than the dose at which it can be detected now there are mainly seven primary odors one musky second floral third camphorigenous fourth peppermint fifth pungent sixth ethanol and seventh putrid the intensity of sensation is related to the concentration of the substance now when we say in a particular order we tend to ignore the smell it's mainly due to the process called as the adaptation with the increase in duration of a stimulus the sensation decreases due to adaptation now if the stimulus persists long enough total adaptation may be achieved that is when we apply a perfume after some time the odor of the perfume will no longer be perceived by us but it can be perceived by the others now adaptation occurs mainly in the central nervous system and partly at the sensory cell level now there are various disorders of smell one the hyperesthesia which is the diminished olfactory sensitivity or hyposmia or anosmia that is the inability to smell they are result from the simple nasal congestion or nasal polyps the congenital anosmia is a rare disorder in which an individual is born without the ability 
to smell now let's talk about taste because smell and taste goes hand in hand now let's suppose we always know that what happens when mother makes our favorite dish we always love it of course we love it because we know it's tasty and it's pleasant to smell so the tastes in simple term is a combination of smell the associated memory and also the texture of the food but not all foods are pleasant to taste some are better and we avoid them why it can be mainly because in the due course of evolution the taste evolved into a tool to warm to warn animals against the harmful foods for example the poisonous plants are always most of the times bitter or unpleasant to taste as this sensation resulted from the chemical stimuli they are also called as the chemical senses so in this chapter we are going to discuss about the sensation that is called as the taste now the basic objectives of this part will be understanding the basic structure of tongue and taste buds generation of sensation of taste and its transmission pathways then abnormalities of the taste and finally the summary now we always know that the first point of contact of food is the tongue the receptors for taste are located on the surface clustered into bud shaped structures called as the taste bud now there are four morphogenetically distinct cells in the bud they are called as the basal cell dark cell light cell and intermediate cell now the intermediate cells are also of three types 1 3 and 2 taste cells they are the sensory neurons that respond to the taste stimuli or taste sense the dead sensory cells are mainly replenished by the basal cells and the basal cells divide to form supporting cells which in turn differentiate into the sensory cells now how do these taste buds detect the chemicals from the surface of tongue why mainly because they are in contact with the external environment through a pore which opens into the apical surface of the sensory cells and the presence of the microvilli in the sensory cell increases its surface area now the taste buds are grouped in structures called as the papillae and papillae literally means the nipple now there are three types of papillae the fungiform papillae which resembles a fungus which are rounded structures most numerous near the tip of the tongue and have five taste buds now next the circumvillate papillae they are the prominent structures arranged in a v on the back of the tongue now the foliate papillae are leaf shaped and are on the posterior edge of the tongue the arrangement of taste buds on the three types of papillae are also different and it is shown in figure number 1 the foliate and foliate papillae are also having bone epner glands which are serous glands associated with them near the base now their secretions keep the surface of the tongue moist prepares the tongue for a new testant by diluting the chemical substance and wash away particulate matter from the tongue the dilution may be of productive value in case of bitter and irritant substances now let's talk about tasting taste now the types of taste and signal transduction we all know that all of us like sweets during festivals and a plate of golgappa or pani puri or fuchka with friends is always priceless even though we are constantly making new dishes but the basic tastes remain the same which are the sweet sour bitter salt and fifth umami there are 
two major types of receptors that is the ligand gated channels or the ionotropic receptors and G protein coupled receptors or the metabotropic receptors. The salt and sour tastes are triggered by activation of ionotropic receptors. Sour, bitter and umami tastes are triggered by the activation of metabotropic receptors. Now let's understand the concept of sweet, sweeter and sweetest. The concept of taste threshold and intensity discrimination. Now what happens? The minimum concentration that is required at which a substance can be perceived is called as the taste threshold. Now to detect the change of intensity, the concentration of the substance must change by 30%. It means that if a food is tasting sweet, just by increasing the concentration by 30%, it is perceived as sweeter. Glucose has the highest threshold concentrations to which the taste buds respond and bitters have the lowest threshold like the strychnine have a bitter taste. Now let's talk about the neuronal pathway or the highway to taste. Till now you have studied about the structure of tongue but it's of no use if you are not able to perceive the taste. Now let's understand how the taste is carried from the tongue to the brain. From the anterior two thirds of the tongue, the nerve fibers form the taste buds travel in cauda tympani branch of the facial nerve. The posterior third of the tongue is sensed by the glossopharyngeal nerve and the posterior most part is mainly by the vagus which all reach in the brainstem. Now they unite in the gustatory portion of the nucleus of tractus solitarius in the medulla oblongata. From there the fibers or the axons of second order neurons ascend in the ipsilateral medial lemniscus and they project directly to the ventral posto, posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus. Now the nerve fibers or the axons of the third order neurons from the thalamus pass to the neurons in anterior insula and the frontal operculum in the ipsilateral cerebral cortex which mediates conscious perception of taste and taste discrimination. Now let's discuss about the various types of taste abnormalities. Now we have dysgeusia or paragusia which is defined as unpleasant perception of taste that in turn causes a metallic, salty, foul or a rancid taste. Agusia is defined as absence of sense of taste and hypogusia as diminished taste sensitivity. They are mainly caused by the vestibular schwamoma, familial dysautonomia, Bell's palsy, multiple sclerosis, infections, example primary amyloid meningoencephalopathy or this can be mainly due to the damage to the lingual and glossopharyngeal nerve. So in summary we can always say that the main sensation that we have in our body is the taste and smell. Both of them go hand in hand. Without smell you cannot taste and without taste you cannot smell properly. Next is we have understood the various types of structures of these uh, structures associated with smell like the odoriferous substances how they are perceived by the enormous increased surface area of the villi or how these odoriferous substances are carried to the central nervous system and how each central nervous system part is activated based on the memory. Now next we have also read about the different types of the disorders of smell. In the next part we have read about the types of taste. What are the different types of tastes 
and how this taste pathways are activated or how the taste is perceived in the central nervous system. The main point to remember in these two things are both of the pathways are almost the same but the main collecting center for the smell is the nose and for the taste is the tongue. Thank you.